also have too many games, too many games, too many games. I would like to introduce introduce to you the one, the only, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. I guess so. Oh, yeah. Louder? Louder. 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 Could I get some tax support? Grab that other mic. Yo. We could do two. We're up like this. So, let's see. Mike is That works. Yeah, we have a good, it's a buffer seat like at a movie theater. A when you see it with your friend. <laughs> it's like, we have a seat up in between. Put your stuff, you got your coat and everything. <laughs> so, so I guess, uh, what have you been up to lately, James? A uh, bunch. Uh, let's see, well, uh, more long-term stuff, like longer projects. Am I hearing feedback? Yeah. Let's see what I wish. Listen, you say you wanted it louder, so... <laughs> Yeah, maybe just like lower it down a little bit. Behind the screen, behind the, literally behind the screen. Yeah, behind, behind the curtain. Yeah. So how, how's this? Is this better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good, cool. Yeah, the biggest thing I've been working on is writing a book. It's an autobiography. So it's like, you know, a lot of times I get the question all the time, like, how did you get started? This is the long answer to how I got started. So that's it. So um, I actually started writing about you wouldn't believe like the first things that are being uh, I don't say included. Like it, it sort of began with notes and like journals from like high school and like I actually decided to start writing a book about my experiences in filmmaking uh, when I was about like 21, something like that. And uh, so I've been working on this book technically for the past 17 years, which is crazy. I mean, on and off, like years would go by where I don't even touch the thing, but. Uh, this past year, uh, right about when the new year happened, I was like, you know, I really want to like just buckle down and get this thing written because I'm just going to forget all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to have lots of old writings, lots of old journal entries, but I was always inspired by uh, books that filmmakers wrote, like uh, there's the Lloyd Kaufman book, the, um, the, you know, the Toxic Avenger one, where he talks about you know forming trauma and uh, everything, and then, uh, Robert Rodriguez had a book called Red Is Not True, and that was kind of like a blueprint for me. Like, this is like, I got so inspired by reading those books that I felt like, you know, a lot of stories I have will probably inspire somebody else, so I might as well put them all down into print. So, I've been working on that, made a lot of progress on it this year. We the past six months, did a lot on it. I don't know anything about publishing a book yet, um, so that'll be a whole other phase, but at least the writing part is getting is getting done. Uh, I was working on writing a feature horror film. Um, that, that took a six month break because of, I was working on the book instead. Probably easier to um, you know, get the book done as opposed to a movie because it's more like, you know, write a script, then you have to shoot it still, and then you have to edit it. Uh, a book, it's, you know, at least then all I gotta do is sit down and write the thing, which is mostly done now it's like in the final phase i'm going over it again fixing typos or like or things that i forget like oh yeah that, that should go in there you know um i'm hoping to do a short film hopefully later this year i mean i was trying to do it last year too but uh um yeah a lot of, a lot of things have happened in the past year i had a uh, you know new baby uh, last <laughs> definitely took a lot of time to, you know, to be, to be dad, you know. She's 10 months old just about now. 
Um, and the old one's five. So yeah, uh, so definitely, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm still working on the nerd videos, um, so that's a that's a big one always. Um, we got a new one to show you now if you want to check it out. It's on it's on Amazon Prime right now. Um, Nerdy Harry. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the seats are all full, so I don't know. You want to just play it? Yeah, I can. I can do it. Sure. Yeah. Episodes, uh, Justin doing a lot of help and the whole team at Screenwave, so we're always collaborating to think of ways to get the videos done more efficiently. So uh, you're probably going to see a lot more toward the end of the year, kind of like last year, because um, sometimes it's easier to like write things in a batch, to shoot them all in a batch, and then edit them all in a batch. So it's kind of like with a, you know, mainly like shoot a bunch of them like in a row. Um, cause then it's sort of, uh, you save a lot of time, like setting up and resetting up. So, um, it's how it worked with a lot of episodes in the past, like the, the four part Castlevania videos, like they were all done that way. Um, so, so you probably see a lot more toward the end of the year. Yeah, I think just, um, Hello. I think, I think something like nine by the end of the year, something like that. So there's a lot. You think we'll get that many? Uh, cool. Yeah, and then I cool. think cool. four in the spring. I know we, we, we were planning yeah. stuff. Yeah. Not sure yet. But there'll be a bunch. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So I, I guess do you want to move on to a Q and A type situation? Sure. Yeah. So sure. what I think um, it might be easier so people can hear you. Um, line up over there by the front of this door if you want to do the Q and A. And then when we start, we have this microphone facing you guys. So let's just get a line going real quick. That's cool. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot what the, uh, what the question was. Sorry, I forgot what the next episode might be, but it's actually in 30 hours. It's in the sewer thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I and now I hope we can get to everyone, but apologies if we don't. Right after this, I'll be having the uh, sign. Um, yeah, I think the sign starts at three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of stuff to boot too. I have a bunch of shitty things for sale. It's like duplicates, so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we can get to everyone. Yeah, sure, it's a little bit. All right, so let's do the first question. Make sure that mic's turned on. Can't hear you. Not loud. Stop talking into the mic. <laughs> a little better. You know, ever hear that? Here, talk loud like this. You know I'm talking loud? All right. In your Earthbound review, uh, you mentioned the original Mother games. Uh, have you thought about going back to playing the uh, original Mother game and Mother 3 as well? I'd like to, but uh, I'd rather do some other games first. Uh, it's probably enough of Earthbound for now. Um, but. Uh, mothers you know uh so i'm probably gonna just do some other stuff in the meantime but yeah i'd like to get back to that somewhere to see how what the other games are like you know one that i'm really curious about is uh majora's mask like i really want i played it a little bit but i haven't played it enough to like really see like all like the crazy stuff that happens but i have the feeling it's probably very interesting in that way it's just like a very uh you know different kind of game so i'm, I'm really curious that might make a, even, what, even if I find it good or bad, whatever, it's probably still make an interesting nerd video. Except that's another one that would probably take months, like several months to make, so like, no joke. Uh, all right, thank you. Thanks. Hey. Um, you know, just by watching your videos, and especially Playlist Junkie, I know that you're a big fan of hard rock and metal. Yeah. And one, one thing, question, 
one of my questions is like, how did you discover your love for that music? Like, what what kind of bands did you start with? Um, I think it's my gateway metal band was Metallica, which is probably everybody's just about <laughs> most people's. Uh, it's a pretty easy one to get into first because uh, they're you know they're they're out there so much they've kind of you know gotten in the mainstream. Uh, yeah, my first concert was actually 20 years ago. It was Metallica. It was it was July 15th in New Jersey. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that was how I got into it for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Hello, James. Um, Hi. <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as college goes, did you go to the University of the Arts or uh, University of Pennsylvania or such? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Have you? Oh, you Sorry. Mm -hmm. If you were ever given the chance, would you ever go back as a, an alumni speaker? Maybe. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably figure that or contact them or something. Sometime. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Sometime. If you know anyone from the school, tell them to contact. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Next up, please. Hey. Um, when you first started uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd. Uh, series on YouTube. What was your inspiration for the nerd as a character when you were first coming up? Oh, I mean, like, well, I guess the look was kind uh, of just like Revenge of the Nerds. You know, it was just like that stereotypical '80s, you know, nerd movies uh, where nerds were like the heroes. You know, um, that was kind of what it, what it was like. But that but that only goes so deep. I think it was more just about remembering some of those games. It was just you know, like it was the fact that it was just that. The whole joke was that who would have ever thought about these games? Like I, I underestimated how many people would remember them, but it was kind of just like, oh, how funny would it be to do a very detailed analysis of this game that nobody's talked about in so long? Um, but, but yeah, it was a bigger thing than I thought. It turned out to be, you know, something big. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Hey. Are you familiar with the NES game that was discovered last year? It was in a Nintendo Power only once, but it was never seen in the light of day. It's called Happily Ever After, which was based off a shitty animated film by Filmation. Off the top of my head, I do not remember that, no. Wow, well thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> okay. Hey, well thanks for being the fucking nerd. Uh, the question is, is it possible for a video game level to be great and or iconic if the music that accompanies it is mediocre at best? If the music's mediocre? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, it, it can be, but it definitely you know helps if the music's good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, my question is, you're starting to lean more towards uh, modern consoles like Sonic 06. What's your cutoff date when it comes to reviews? I don't know if there really is one now. There's no cutoff date, um, but it definitely helps if it seems retro. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, I think it just depends more on the, the game and the material now. So, yeah, because yeah, I think outside of, because uh, that was on 360, because I think it was just because it was Sonic 06 that's how requested. But I think usually, usually Xbox PS2 is the cutoff, kind of. Yeah, it seems like usually that's the case. And then sometimes there's like, Big Rigs was 2003. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait, I, I didn't think, I kind of thought that there was a certain point where games couldn't be that bad anymore because it was just like, oh, well, now it's like, like oh, if it's, it's not that old, I'm sure by then there's some quality control. By then, more people are reviewing games, and it's like, you, you can't make a bad game nowadays. They're like, oh, you sure can. It was. <laughs> And not only that, but like, a, it's so bad it doesn't even qualify as a game. <laughs> the game was programmed in the Russian Eastern Bloc. Like, there was no quality control. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Um, 
So I know with like um like Iron Steam Bear, mm -hmm. uh, so there was like more of a shift. Uh, some of those like episodes around that time, it's, like more narrative heavy like mm -hmm. style, kind of different than past episodes, and more yeah. similar to like board games. Mm -hmm. um, is there gonna be like more of a return of that kind of style episode, or are we gonna see more board games or more like narrative heavy like content from you? Or yeah, I mean I hope so. either way I'm putting narrative effort into something. So if it doesn't go into a nerd video. Like if you know there's more like basic ones or whatever, then it usually means I'm putting the narrative part into something else. Like uh, with Board James, I was putting the focus into that. That year, um, and uh, it was just like sinking for some reason. Um, the microphone like fell asleep. <laughs> so either way, I'll be putting that same effort into something. Like I'm, I'm trying to put it more into making the next film now, but I'm, I'm trying to juggle it all at the same time. So yeah, it's basically like when there's extra time, or, you know, when there's extra time, then I'll put more into those type of videos, like like Earthbound, that was a big project. But those are my favorite, yeah, Polybius, those are my favorite type of ones too, uh, where it's like a really narrative, you know, cinematic thing. So I, like, I, I, they were definitely my favorite as well, because of like, especially comparing them to like the original like, mm -hmm. episodes, like the six or like eight that were like on Cinemassacre. Yeah. Like, it's like just seeing like how far the series has grown is really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, like the Rob the Robot one yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks. Hey. Hello, my name is Joseph Kaminsky, and is it okay if I ask four questions? Sure, okay. <laughs> Wait, four? If they're really no, easy, let's, if they're let's, short let's answers. Go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what they are. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're really short answers I can do for. We'll do a rapid fire. All right, here we go. My first question is, how many languages do you speak? Uh, only one. I am, I'm very interested. I've always been very interested in learning another language, and I, and I picked Japanese. I'm, I'm mostly interested in uh, how it's written. I'm interested in uh, um, all the alphabets, the kanji and the katakana and hiragana. So I've, I've actually, I have the kana sounds all memorized. Like I'm, I'm able to read... Uh, kind of very slowly, but I still don't know what it means most of the time. So I'm still, yeah, so I can translate one thing into, some, into something else that I can't understand, basically. But I'm working on that. I've been starting on kanji. I have uh, only about 100 kanji symbols memorized right now. It's a long process, obviously, and I'm like, not like a kindergartner with it for now. But, uh, but yeah, it's just something to, you know, to work on. Yeah. Sorry for the long answer. Yes, it's rapid fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My second question is, what type of editing and recording software do you use for your videos? Lately, I mostly use Adobe Premiere because the green screen is much better, right? and also you don't have to. It's less picky about the codec. Like you don't have to. A Final Cut, you have to trans, uh, like transfer everything to transcode everything to ProRes usually. And uh, but I still use Final Cut. I know it's obsolete. I'm talking about Final Cut 7, not the X, you know. But I am definitely at like a crossroads where I gotta figure out what to do because the, the Mac hardly runs pr Premiere uh, or even Final Cut now. It's like everything I try to do, it just crashes over and over and over again, glitches all the time. So yeah, sorry, another long answer, but yeah, <laughs> I'm working on that. It's mostly Premiere right now. My third question is, are there any games you reviewed that you really do hate? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, Jekyll and Hyde for sure. But, uh, but I love to hate it though. I love to hate it. <laughs> um, my fourth question is: Are there any games that you viewed that, like Mike hated but you liked? Ah, uh, good question. All of them. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So thanks. You're welcome, James. You're better than Nostalgia Critic. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell that to God. Hey James, big fan. Thank you for all the entertainment over the years. Um, I think a lot of us have dipped our toes into your body of work with the Angry Video Game Nerd, but you've also done a lot of other great things like Monster Madness and, and Board James. Um, so my question is, uh, do you ever kind of feel like you're in the shadow of the nerd, so to speak? As if, um, you know, obviously it's given so much to you and you've been able to give so much to us as a result of it, but oh, in yeah. terms of branching out into other things like, you know, you're writing a book or, you know, other movies mm -hmm. or other projects, do you ever feel some sort of obligation or some sort of uh, stifling by the nerd character? 
Uh, no, I mean, it's the one that really helped, like, without the nerd, and a lot of people wouldn't have seen my older films, stuff like that. Um, and then still even doing the next film, and it's because of the nerd, uh, more people will see. The next film. So it really does help. It's not, I don't see it as a hindrance or anything. But it does get hard juggling both, like trying to do, find the time for everything, because you want to do everything. I want to do, you know, it's bullshit and stuff like that. But it's like, there just isn't time for everything. That, that's the only hard part, the expectation. Mm, well, the, the, the time, but yeah, expectation too, and to keep them, you know, good. Um, it's hard to do. Yeah, thanks. Hey, how you doing? Have you considered doing more fifth generation games? Most of the games you review are basically pre fourth generation backwards. Oh yeah, yeah, fourth generation would be which consoles again? Fourth gen is SNES, mm -hmm. Sega Genesis. So by fifth okay. gen I mean PS1 and 64 mm -hmm. and Sega Saturn. Okay. That's my favorite generation. Oh cool. Well, thanks. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, yeah, you mostly do man. third gen, which is NES. Yeah, that usually those are the ones. Probably because those are the first ones I played. I had more memories of that. But uh, I think the fifth generation was more like when I started. Um, I started, uh, you know, not having as much time. And more things were going on in my life. You know, starting college and stuff, and I wasn't playing games as much as I used to. So that's kind of the generation where it's a little bit past my time. Not completely, but like I got the N64 when it first came out. You know, played Mario 64. Ocarina of Time, I think I was like freshman year college and, and then slowed down. Um, but yeah, so it's mostly probably gonna be the older stuff, but I am trying to do more later stuff too. I see. I think I do recall on your uh, Independence Day review, you said, People said the PS1 was the last of the classic consoles, but then you stated you thought it all ended after the Super Nintendo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was so long ago, I don't remember, but yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. Like, <laughs> like uh, before they went to like three-dimensional. That's right. So, like, yeah, like it was like the last one, last system where it was, you know, mostly side-scrollers, you know, with the oh, exception of like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, just that they didn't have, the, you know, like, I mean, like, yeah, it's Star Fox, you know, and stuff like that, but mostly games were, like, 2D, um, but, yeah, I don't know, I don't know where it was, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know, yeah, to me, that was, like, I feel like, yeah, like, I guess the, when it went, like, three-dimensional, that was kind of, like, the beginning of, like, a modern era, it was, like, it all started a new thing, so that's kind of where I must have separated that, as this is the next phase in games. You should probably just move it back again. The first generation, that's where it all ended after that. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> it's just Pong, that's it. Yeah, Pong. Yeah. 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 Space yeah. where they figured it out. That would be fun. You know, that's a good idea. Oh, like an old school gamer. Like maybe the nerd has it. There's another guy who's like a really old school gamer. <laughs> I'm, I'm not into this newer shit. Yeah, RF <laughs> adapter. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you mean like, yeah. like not into like, you know, all the, the 3D things. No, no, no. I mean, like the cop. Is where it's at. Yeah, I, 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 need, I need my games to be one dimension. That's all you need. You just need two little paddles and a ball. I'm like, why would you need more than that? <laughs> that would be good to work into that video. Yeah. Uh, graphics aren't everything. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll take the next question. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. But I will say, uh, not you know, give it to but I know um, the Halloween episode might be fifth gen. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Um, I got a question. If any video that you would like to go back to that you think you can do better, would you do it? Yeah, I will. Yeah, you know, actually, the, the re revisited ones, those are probably all the ones where I was just kind of like, you know, I had more to say about this game or something like that. That was, um, so, so I think I tackled most of those. Off the top of my head, I don't see any other ones <laughs> that I that I think I'd need to do. Like, I mean, maybe Double Dragon 3 or something, but still. I don't think there'd be there's that much material left in it that would be that worthwhile. I mean, I'd probably rather just keep going on with with newer newer videos, uh, the games that I haven't done. Great, thank you. Thanks. I'm honored to meet you. Oh, thanks a lot. Hey, hey, James. Mm -hmm. uh, big fan. Thank you very much over the years. Um, one of my favorite shows of yours is Cinemasker Mailbag. Have you ever thought about bringing that yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, too, uh, whatever happened to Boots? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's around. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. I've um, always had nothing but good memories with him. Uh, and 
uh, as far as the um, uh, mailbag stuff, I've thought about it. Um, I know you have a lot on your plate, so. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the only reason why. But but I, that, I still save messages and that I'm like, oh, this would be fun to read sometime. Some funny ones and then some like nice ones and just like, you know, yeah, because the mailbag ones were pretty pretty fun to do. So I hope, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed those. All right, thank you very much. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Good. Mm -hmm. How you doing, James? Uh, yeah, good to uh, see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just an honor to, you know, see you again. And just want to thank you again for everything you've done to help out Project 21 and um, and uh, everything that you do as the Angry Video Game Nerd. So thank you very much for that. I have uh, just two quick questions for you. Um, one, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the horror movie that you're making? Because, like, I'm really curious now. Oh, well, thank you, yeah. I mean, it, it could be years before you finally see it, but uh, <laughs> just to uh, give you an idea of kind of what to expect, I mean, it's a pretty low-key horror movie. I mean, it's like a, a slow burn. It's kind of not really like... It's not a very exploitive horror movie. It's not really like a lot of... Not like, you know, like a big body count or like a lot of gore. Um, it's more like uh, like an atmospheric, slow horror film that kind of like builds up. Um, and uh, I guess if you've seen a lot of my videos, I know you have, uh, yes. that there'll be um, a lot of like, uh, you might notice traces of this, you know, you'll see all my styles in it, oh, like yeah. Cinemaphobia is one I did that you might sort of notice a little bit of that. The board James stuff I did with mm -hmm. where it took like a dark turn, like you'll you kind of notice like, those kind of trends in it. Uh, Legend of the Blue Hole. Um, it basically, like there's maybe like you, you might notice like a little bit of of everything that I've I've done. Um, the Polybius video, that's kind of like a good. I, um, I mean, it's not like found footage. It's nothing like that. But mm -hmm. that Polybius video, it, it kind of has sort of that, like where I don't know, like I'm go, like less is more. Mm, yeah. Cool. And. Um, I know you're also friends with Joel Hodgson and uh, Matt and Steph Conant who have um, mm. helped to bring back Mystery Science Theater 3000. So uh, yeah. I'm wondering, like, have they asked you to help write an episode or two? Oh, I'd love it. I believe I was in the conversation about it. Um, I, I I don't think I'd be the best to do that, though. You know, it's not really like my thing or what I do, but I, I'm totally honored if they ever did it, seriously ask me. I never really spoke to Joel that much, though. I was just kind of like at the uh, you know the Project 21 events. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, we'd all be like you know, hanging out in the same circle. But uh, uh, but yeah, uh, it, yeah, it would be cool. I'm really glad they brought it back. I'm glad that that you know that was a long uh, project in the making. Um, I'm glad to see that happen. I still haven't watched. I've watched some of them. I, I was working on the. I was watching the Reptilicus one so far. Oh yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but they're all in my Netflix queue. You know, so I just. I haven't made it through them yet, but I'm uh, you know, looking forward to watching the rest. Sounds awesome. Uh, once again, thank you very much, James, and an honor to talk to you again. Oh, thank you. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Um, throughout your career, have you watched other uh, game review videos? And if so, uh, to what extent? Like, just for enjoyment, or are you that kind of person who likes to research and uh, check out everything that's out there before or just during? Yeah, unfortunately, very little. Um, very little do I actually get to watch a lot of um, like other people's stuff because I'm usually too busy working on my own stuff. And then like you know, there's there's no free time, especially now. Like with with one kid, it was hard to do that, and then with two kids, it's like impossible now. I really don't have any free time. But but when I do, when I get like a little bit of free time, I'm usually like watching a movie or something. Um, Usually, it's like, man, I just want to get away from my computer at the end of the day because I've been you know, staring at the computer for, like all day, and then it's just kind of like I'm usually just sitting back watching a movie um, for just like usually in, in like many parts because I can't get I don't have time to time in one night, but I'll watch like 20 minutes of a movie or something, go to sleep, and then you know continue it the next night. Yeah. Okay, next, yeah. Hey, hey, I got two questions. Mm -hmm. First one is. Since you've got a sequel to your game, APG Adventures, mm -hmm. are you ever planning on doing a video of it about it in the future? Since you did the episode involving APG Games. Oh yeah, to add on to it, to make to do one about the second one. That'd be a good idea, maybe sometime. We are ho hoping though that there will be a third game eventually. So we are, uh, yeah. you know, so 
hoping for that in a third game it, it should be uh, you know in the works. And for my second question, in the C-Man video, mm -hmm. everything that the C-Man said, did they actually say that in the game or did you just edit it to make it look like he said all those things? Um, uh, everything that the, the, the creature says in the game was actually said in the game, um, so there's nothing added. Um, a lot of those things are like, you have to know how to trigger it to make them say it. That was one of the hardest things. Because like a lot of it, like I did a lot of research, I'm like, okay, well I know what he says. I really need to get him to say this. Like I think he said something about Genesis or something, or all hail Sega or whatever. I'm like, I need to get that line, I need to get that line. And I remember, that was uh, probably like 60 hours on the gameplay of that. And it's not a game that you can just keep playing because it's, it's on time. So you have to like, you have to go into the, the clock settings and speed up the clock to keep getting forward. But it still it takes a long time. You gotta turn off the system, start it up again. And then I messed something up where like I had to redo like hours and hours and hours of the game over again just to get him to say one thing. But yeah, it was really, uh, that was a tough one. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. We got about five minutes left, so we should probably speed this up. Hey, I was just wondering, do you have any intention to do a sequel to your Atari Sports video? I always found it was one of the you know, more appropriate uh, topics for the nerd to cover, and there are a couple of lines in there that sort of almost made me not really inclined to do a sequel. Oh, okay. Huh. Off the top of your head, are there any games that would you put in the Oh, I, I don't know. Just the way you did the Atari, I figure you would just do any yeah. sports or video games. Oh, so next like console. That. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, I could maybe do that, yes, but I feel like I could. I think what, what more me doing was the Atari sports games are so funny because you really have to use your imagination for what's going on. I don't know if we would have that same type of humor. Yeah, yeah, so it would be a lot different. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Billy! Hey. Hey, James. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, after one of the, these cinematic or mailbag videos, did you ever figure out what a wig rammer is? <laughs> I'm sure it means nothing, but. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the funniest things. Uh, Glad that caught on. I think like that that guy's message really uh, caught. Like, people put it on T-shirts and like it's uh, yeah. A, a lot of people must have seen that one. Yeah, that that was like probably one of like the best things yeah, yeah. I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, and I was just just reading it and then there's like laughing myself to tears. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Hey, I see you again. Um, uh, I can't say fully yet, but something's gonna happen. Two screen wave games and all that soon. We can't talk about that yet. Something. Cool. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, Steve. Rand, uh, Pantera Sherpa, Resident Evil. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I was just wondering if you had any future projects. Uh, you can see me or ideas with that. Oh, oh, that's a future project uh, with, with YouTube uh, TV or I guess uh, I'm not, not in the plans right now, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right now we're doing a lot of the Amazon stuff, and there might be yeah. Amazon YouTube yeah. Red and stuff like that in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. it'll get bigger now, yeah. Right. But right now we're yeah. just focusing on the Amazon, keeping it up to date. Hey, hey, on. First of all, I want to say I'm a big fan of the Cinema Mass for Monster Madness videos. Oh, in your opinion, who, which movie is Boris Karloff better in, The Mummy or Frankenstein? Uh, I mean, with Frankenstein, I think he, he's better at Bride of Frankenstein. They give him more. But wait, if you're just comparing Frankenstein and The Mummy, I think The Mummy, to tell you the truth, because he, he gets to use his voice more. Yeah. He has a little bit more to work with. Uh, I mean, I guess that is a lot of the credit to the, the monsters on Frankenstein, mm -hmm. that he does so much without speaking. But at the same time, I think The Mummy, he is just so sinister. Like, even when he's just standing there, like, the shape of his body he still has that kind of, like, especially when he has the fez on, he's yeah. so tall, and he just kind of has this shape where, like, just seeing him is is, is so iconic. Um, like, from the profile, from the straight on, like, the eyes, you know, they're always doing things with his eyes, and, like, I mean, he's he's really good in The Mummy, so I'd go with that one. Okay, you know? thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
And we've got like two minutes left, so we'll do it real quick. Okay, so we'll do one more right after you. Yeah. Okay, I just have two quick questions. I know you're a big film fan, and that's why you started the Cinema Massacre. Have you ever thought of doing kind of an angry cinema nerd looking at camera? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it'll happen, but it's kind of like what I do anyway with movie interviews, although I typically tend to like tell people about movies I like, like here's recommendations. Um, there was a little bit of that idea when I did the Ninja Turtle 3 uh, review with uh, the nerd, I call it the angry movie nerd, and that was kind of like, I guess you could say that's sort of like an aborted character, where it was going to be like, a, uh, that was going to be like another spin-off for the nerd, but it didn't really... I just kept doing the nerd, the regular nerd did it, so I never really like focused on that much. It's still fun to watch though. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And uh, one last question. Before everyone leaves, we will take a big group photo of everyone, if that's cool. Sure. So, sure. so if, we, if we could, can we hit all those lights on the side of the wall there to get all the lights in the room on? Anyone see the switches over there? What would you do the last question? That's a good question. Yeah, I, I had very little to do with the actual like the development programming. I was mostly just feedback. Where it was just like, you know, they they show me ideas or they let me like play like you know test levels and stuff, and then uh, you know give some opinions. Uh, and then, and then, still, like more opinions come later. Like I remember the first one, we were like, you know, maybe maybe scale down with the death blocks, not have as many of them. So the second game, they did a lot less with that. Um, yeah, so that was a bad idea. Like feedback. Yeah. So I hope to do it a lot more this time. Like this time, maybe I might be a little like maybe more involved a bit. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, I will say if there is any sort of remastered or deluxe versions of 1 and 2 that might come to systems that we don't know about yet, um, they might be redesigned games to be a lot better and fodder and have more input, yes. So, but I can't talk about Yeah, but they, I thought they did a great job, though. Great job with the first two. Yeah, so I guess let's get the group photo. How would you like to do it, Mr. Photographer? The well, third game will be very different, by the way. So the guys who are still in line, you guys can be right in the front here. So I didn't get to ask a question. Please uh, exit out the back door if we can. The back door.